We begin the show with this week's latest trends in AI. Gamal, what should we know? Thank you, Fifi. And here's a wrap of what's trending in AI. In global news, a majority of Europeans say they want heightened government restrictions on artificial intelligence to decrease impact on job security. This according to a recent study from Spain's IE University. The research shows that out of 3,000 Europeans, 68% want government to introduce rules to safeguard jobs. Researchers have also noted that most Europeans say they wouldn't feel confident distinguishing between content that is AI-generated and content that is genuine, with only 27% believing they would be able to spot AI-generated fake content. And in digital news on the continent, American business pioneer Bill Gates announced this week that he will invest 30 million US dollars in a new AI platform in Africa that will aid scientists in developing solutions for healthcare and social issues across the continent. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation says it hopes the initiative will make AI, which Gates has referred to as, open quote, the most important advance in technology since the graphical user interface, close quote. It will, and it will be more success, accessible to African researchers and will pave the way for local innovation. That's all for me for now. In news fresh from our offices in Johannesburg, South Africa, we welcome our newest addition to our show and the broader CNBC Africa platform, Chanel AI, for another update on tech in Africa. News out this week from African tech startup investor Baobab Network will see investment worth $100,000 into 1,000 African companies over the next 10 years. The funding aims to provide critical early financing to help African startups get off the ground. The firm's co-founder Toby Huntington says the fund aims to empower 1,000 startups, catalyzing innovation and driving economic growth across the continent. He also adds the fund also signifies the African startups' intent to bolster African entrepreneurship amid declining investment. And that's all for Missional AI. You're up to date. It's back to you, Fifi. Looking at digitalization, uh, which continues to be an important topic for governments all over the world, the transformation from paper-based systems or, or archaic IT systems to modern solutions stands to unlock faster service delivery, more inclusive governance, and even much-needed savings for the fiscal purse. To discuss how the new Digital Transformation Advisory Panel appointed by the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research can help government become more digitally savvy as well as broader conversations around South Africa's fourth industrial revolution strategy. I am joined by Dr. Nzibane Ntlatlapa. He's the center head for the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution of South Africa. So thanks so much for your time. Perhaps let's just uh, start off with the advisory panel that was appointed in which you are one of the uh, members, one of the nine members, I believe, that has been appointed. Can you just uh, share with us exactly what your mandate is? What was given to you and over what term period will you have to achieve? So the, the advisory panel is that has been highlighted here is um, it's a standard panel that has been appointed for all the CSIR clusters. Now we have a cluster here at the CSIR that is called the Next Generation Enterprises and Institutions, which really focuses on digital transformation. And this um, advisory panel include mostly the members from the industry. Um, I'm the only member of that panel who's from within the CSIR. Now the mandate of this particular panel is to link the research that the CSIR does with the needs of the industry. It enables us to co-design the type of research that the industry needs and be uh, in a position from the CSIR point of view to engage with the industry and make sure that our outcomes are the ones that, they see, that the industry needs to increase the uptake of those uh, outcomes. And I see that one of the uh, one of your respective panel uh, members, your colleagues on this advisory panel, has got a a, a specific uh, background in artificial intelligence. He uh, runs an artificial intelligence uh, firm, and I'd like to understand, just in your view, and maybe based on the thoughts of your colleagues, what the uh, consensus thinking around AI is right now, and what it could potentially mean for government and public institutions. The general idea is that there is no consensus around uh, where we are 
um, in terms of artificial intelligence. Um, the, uh, what we know now is that there are a lot of companies like the one that you have just mentioned and many others um, in South Africa that are innovating around the AI. In fact, in a recent study um, that looked at the AI development in the whole continent, it became clearer that the majority of the companies that are AI companies on the continent comes from South Africa and the majority of the uh, startup funding is also in South Africa. So we don't know that there's a lot of work uh, from, the, from, from the private sector perspective. We also know that there's a lot of work uh, that has come in into the institutions. But in terms of the exact know-how of where we are compared to other countries as a general um, development in AI, there's no clear consensus on that. Uh, Dr. Nzimani, your, your um, work or the work of the CSIR, uh, particularly around the fourth industrial revolution, has been happening for some time. In fact, it even predates the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And perhaps just bring us up to speed with what has happened in this time period and what has been achieved. Um, so I think you are, the, 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 the important thing is that um, when we start to talk about the work uh, in the what industrial revolution is a little bit broad, um, particularly when it comes to the CSIR. So I'll focus a lot more on the digital transformation aspect uh, of the engagement in the uh, 4IR. Um, so for, for as, as, as you have rightly mentioned, uh, the work has been uh, continuing quite a lot. Um, and there have been maybe three pillars that one could highlight. Um, the, the first one being on advancing the infrastructure, the ICT infrastructure. The second one being the ICT for the business side. Um, was the third one would be from ICT use by government, um, which you know uh, we tend to now call a digital government. So in all those three uh, elements, uh, you have seen a lot of work that has been uh, done by the CSIR. Uh, on the infrastructure uh, element, recently we knew that um, we had a spectrum auction last year. Um, and I can highlight that uh, the studies that paved the way for us to have the policy that enabled us to have the spectrum auction, that work was led by the CSIR. Um, and the, after presenting that particular work, to cabinet and cabinet approved the CSIR report. It then paved the way for us to have the spectrum option, which will enable us to have better um, you know, technologies on the use of the spectrum. Um, on the government side, um, you would also have known that uh, just prior to us going onto the pandemic, there was a big uh, announcement in terms of the health records that we have. So currently, what you will have when you go to a public uh, clinic is that your record will be put out um, you know, from the online system instead of uh, going to a paper-based system. And if you move from one clinic to another, your record will also be put out. Uh, so your record won't disappear. So that work was pioneered by the CSIR through the creation of the standard for the patient record, uh, which was adopted by government, and sure. also developed the, the main system that drives that particular work. Sure, sure. I mean, so in uh, terms of enablement of the industry, um, we can cover many. Uh, at some point, we had the, the wireless mesh network um, that was that 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 was a you know license to the industry, and recently we have. Uh, what we call as a TV white spaces database that is currently licensed to the industry and they are developing those types of networks. Dr. Nzibane, if we take it back to where the uh, conversation began, so we're talking about this digital advisory uh, panel, digitization advisory panel that has been appointed and just looking at your work uh, within the uh, 4IR, Guiding South Africa's 4IR uh, strategy, 
when we think about artificial intelligence and what it is doing right now, many people are saying what it is doing for their industries is that it's making development a lot quicker. Uh, many people are also saying that it's reducing certain barriers by uh, making the technological developments a lot cheaper. So when you think broadly about artificial intelligence and what it could mean for the fourth industrial revolution uh, as it stands uh, right now, what, what, what does that picture show you? So, so I think uh, you have highlighted uh, a number of those things and I, and I would like to, uh, in this particular case, just uh, link the artificial intelligence uh, with another uh, closely related area of uh, the data analytics. Um, where really having data available um, and releasing data by different players, whether these players are private or public, particularly more on the public uh, sector. Once that data is readily available, one could then deploy the tools that you can get from the artificial intelligence suite of tools to enable faster processing of that particular data in a way in which you can draw um, interesting insights. Um, what is important is that once the data becomes too much and you have a lot of data, it becomes almost impossible for a human being to uh, decipher all of that and draw all the insights without the help of the machine. So the machines would work much faster to draw all those uh, patterns and trends for you, and we can then be, uh, you know, interpret that. But further than that, it can also enable you to do the predictions of what could happen based on what you have learned in the past. So um, one could understand how the disasters may be built up um, if you have a certain weather patterns and combined with um, other conditions, and you can understand those. But, uh, so once you deploy the systems, they can even uh, enable you to predict the likelihood of you having a disaster, the likelihood of you having um, a wildfire, for instance, and the likelihood of having floods in a particular area to enable you to plan earlier to do the interventions. All right. Uh, Dr. Zibane, uh, so thanks so much for sharing those insights. We'll leave it there. Uh, Dr. Zibane Ndlatlapa, he's the center head for the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution here in South Africa. And it is